when you started in stand-up comedy, like mm-hmm. what what years were those? Like eighties, early eighties, uh, eighty-two, three, four. So what were you like fifteen or something? <laughs> I was like, I think I was like seventeen when I first started, and then. How do you start? Let's go. Let's go over this because okay. I like this whole <laughs> this whole trajectory. You decide you want to do stand-up comedy, right? Yeah, I saw Steve Martin perform. First of all, my dad had comedy albums. Right. You know, what your dad has is what you're interested in. And there was San Francisco in the early 60s had, like, a comedy scene. And my dad, when he was dating my mother, that's where they would go out. He'd go to the Hungry Eye. Did you grow up in San Francisco? Yeah, just, yeah. In the, I was born in San Francisco in the Haight-Ashbury before... The hit Ashbury was the hit Ashbury. So you decide you want to be a stand-up comedian, and you go to like a a, a place. I didn't know. I heard that there was a club, and then I, that there was a place in town. And the big guy there was Robin Williams, right? Oh, yeah. Well, there was a scene because of him. Basically, clubs opened because he was there. It was the weirdest thing. Robin was such a like a supernova. That, like, you know, he was in orbit. We all kind of rotated around. And Robin Williams wasn't in the L.A. scene. He was in the San Francisco yeah, yeah. comedy he scene. He could have stayed in L.A. It was way The clubs were better. The girls were better looking. Everything. Right. He came up. And then, thank God for him because, you know, he would literally, uh, he mentioned in Playboy magazine. He did that big interview when he yeah. made it. Or her. And I don't think people today realize how huge Robin Williams was. When Robin would show up, the audience would come hoping that he would there be there and more times than not he would show up right and then the place would get packed and then he'd do two hours and then they'd all leave was, the, then, was the whole two hours good or what is it like maybe 10 percent of it good it because... was a very high percentage the thing about him was he was electric so he would go off what was happening and if it wasn't going good he'd switch quickly right and he would like make everything um seem um, improvisational and some of it was so was he your teacher in a way like like you were a young kid starting out didn't you work at some comedy club that's the you worked yeah, there I right was, i was the bartender you were the bartender I, but it was easy because i only had beer but you didn't have a a, a, a big act at no, that wait, point i had no i didn't know what to do first of all i saw but all when you see people. robin williams would you get intimidated and oh, say i yeah. can't fucking do well, this you, you, well that was the thing about it so okay you know what? i can't do that so it's okay i'll just do I, I, okay, that's unreachable. Right. But he had this thing, which is a blessing and a curse, which is like he's the comic genius. And so he had to live up to that every time. Right. But 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 he kind of, you know, he fulfilled it more times than not. And sometimes, you know, he'd be get on stage and then other people would go up with him. And he was like, he just had another level of energy. Did he have bad nights? Like, was there nights that he bombed and people were like, fuck you? No. Or was, it was I always never a saw good night. Him because the audience was so psyched to see him that he would really have to work to under-deliver, if that makes sense. So he was already on Mark and Mindy? He was already you... winning. Oh, yeah, he was already way up there. And you knew him as a personal friend because you were the bartender there, and then you got to hang with him? I was him? one of those guys, like, everybody bugged him. Comedians would come by and say, hey, I'm broke, man. And then he'd, give him, he'd take money out of his own pocket. Wow. So, And here's, here's Robin Williams to me, what sums him up. To me, like he would always say nice things to you. Oh, you did good on Letterman. Oh. Yeah. And then, uh, hey, Letterman likes you. Oh, you can tell. Oh. And it's just whatever to make you feel good. He came up and saw me perform. And I had this, you know, when you come up, you have your killer bits. And I had an end to my Netflix special. I was going to do this big ending where this, you know, it's a woman of her having sex, you know. And then uh, she said, women are still thinking about stuff, even when you're having sex. Them. So she's bent over and she's coming up and she's thinking of all this stuff. And I thought that was the ending. And I had it and it was perfect. And then Robin came up with a better ending. He said to you, I've got a better uh, ending for you? He just came and said, oh, you got to say, like, uh, credit cards, jewelry, distract them. <laughs> jewelry, jewelry. And I'm like, whoa, that's better. How generous of him. Yeah, well, he was just a... Um, so you were you a, a close friend of his? No. no. I mean, I never wanted to, like, I didn't want anything from him because I, everyone was bugging him. And, I like, I'm one of those guys who just, um, uh, you know, I was in his orbit and I was happy to be around him. 